Welcome back to Crashing Waves Designs. Today I'm going to walk you through one of our new hand sanitizer holders. Here are the materials I'll be using for this project. This right here is a cork from So Sweetness. This is a rainbow. This is vinyl from My Pump Rotary. Cotton fabric from Purple Dragon Fabrics. Gold hardware and some cam snaps. I personally use the regular cam snaps, which are the T20. Once we get to that part of the tutorial, I will show you how I use the regular prong and how I get them to work for me. For this project, you're going to be using tearaway stabilizer. So I'm going to just lay my mighty hoop down. Place my stabilizer. And it's hoop. That simple. Now let's go ahead and get this over to the machine so we can get the stitch out started. So now that the hoop is on the machine, you want to get started with step one. Step one is the placement stitch and it's to be ran directly onto the stabilizer. I just wanted to show you all, I have my iPad right here which has my, my stitch steps. Um, this is another option if you don't have a printer. Let's go ahead and stitch step one. Now that step one is completed, we're going to place our top material. I am using a rainbow cork from So Sweetness. You can also use embroidery vinyl if you prefer. Okay. So and now we're gonna run step two, which is the placement stitch for the first part of the applique. That was not the best color choice, but this right here, it's an outline. It's so hard to see, I'm sorry about that. You are going to get your material and you're going to cover it, completely cover it. Just wanna move this down to where I want it. And then you are going to run step three, which is going to tack it down. Once this is finished, you're going to remove the hoop from the machine and you're going to trim the excess fabric. Now that I have this moved to my table, I'm just going to get this cut. You want to get very close to these stitch lines. For your smaller projects, this area is not as forgiving as it would be if you were applicating on clothing. So if you have little pieces like this. Can you see these little furs? If they're sticking out, it's likely it'll stick to your satin and it doesn't look too great. So take your time if you're new. Cut close. It's definitely a process. So you're not just going to get it perfect the first time but you can always fix it, so that's the good part. So let's just say I'm gonna mess up right here. Let me get this out of the way so you all can see me correct. Look at that fabric, it's so pretty. So, see right there where there's that chunk of fabric? You do not wanna leave that there. Get your scissors in there and cut it off. It will get there. If you need to take some extra time, 
do so because it will get in there. Just get it off. Be patient and we'll come off. Just don't leave it like that. It's off. So now we're going to put it back on the machine and we are now going to do the placement and applique of the bow. Back on the machine, we're going to run the next step, which is the placement guide for the bow. This is where I'm going to add my vinyl. So it's going to cover that bow, which this is a little scrap. That's why it's important to keep your scraps because look at that. This could actually do this bow probably four times. So we're gonna place it, completely cover that bow, and run your next step. Now that that's complete, we're also going to take this off the hoop. We're going to take this off the machine. Do not take the hoop off and we are going to cut the excess off. Just as we did with the previous fabric, we are going to trim the excess off of this area. Again, you want to make sure that you cut close to those stitch lines and you don't have excess hanging in the way. I tend to use duckbill scissors when I do applique. If you have another pair of scissors that you prefer, let me know in the comments below. Maybe I can try those out, see how they work. I've used duckbill for a very long time. So it's gonna be hard for me to get off of them, but I would like to try anything Cut all this off. I'm gonna slide these scissors in here and get all that fur off because that is not okay. So there's that bow, and I'm going to get it back on the machine so we can start doing the satin. The hoop is placed back onto the machine, and now we're going to run step six. Now we're going to run step seven, which is the satin stitch for the bow. Now the bow is complete. We so now we are going to run the bottom applique area. The next step is going to be your placement guide for your fabric. So let's go ahead and run step, step eight. This is that placement guide. It shows you exactly how much fabric you need. And being that this is going to come around, this fabric needs to be placed towards you. So let me go ahead and show you. So you want the pattern placed this way. Okay. 
So I'm gonna run the next step, which is gonna tack down this fabric. This fabric now needs to be trimmed, so I'm gonna take it over to the table and get that removed. So now that this fabric is tucked down, we need to cut the excess. So let's get in here. And you will see, I did switch my scissors. These are the, I believe it's Ginger or Ginger brand. I'm not too sure on the pronunciation. These are heavier than the other ones I use, so it kind of forces me to slow down a bit. Let me get that cut. Make sure you all can still see. There it is. So, I'm not sure if you can see these, but do you see these little let me try to get it this little excess right here that's what I'm talking about when I'm trying to explain that this cannot be sticking out or left or it's gonna stick through your satin area so you just come back down get the scissors in there and just cut it like if you take your time you can get it all off So here it is, all the excess is trimmed. We're gonna put it back on the machine and run that next satin stitch. The hoop is now back on the machine and we're gonna run the next step, which is the satin around this applique area. So now that that satin stitch is complete, we're gonna remove the hoop from the machine and add the backing. Here's the back of the hoop. This, I'm not sure if you can see it really well, but here's the outline. You need to completely cover this up. I use this adhesive spray. If you do not like this option, you can also scotch tape it or painters tape it. And your, this piece is also, if you wanna use some glitter canvas or some a solid marine vinyl, you can use that as well. It's basically up to you. This is going to be the inside. So your flap will come around and your pocket's gonna be right here. So let's get this back on the machine. We're going to run the next two steps and then we will get the pocket placed. Okay, so here we are. We're back on the machine. Just run the next step. It's gonna go completely around the entire design. So it'll take just a minute.
you're now gonna run the next step, which is step number 12. And this is going to be your placement guides for your pocket. If you are running the sanitizer holders that have two, you are not going to have this placement stitch. So you're gonna to have to reference your stitch step guide to see where to place your pocket. So again, if you have two in your hoop right now, if you have a group, you will remove this hoop and take it to your table to place your pocket. We're running this single design, so it is going to stitch the placement guides for the pocket. Once this step is complete, you will remove the hoop from the machine so we can add the pocket. It's really hard to see because this is the bobbin, but there is a line right here and there is a line right here. You are going to place your pocket right beneath them so it will line it up. Let's see, is that line straighter? Yeah, so this line's a little straighter. And then you are going to secure the material. I'm using scotch tape. You probably don't want to use adhesive spray right here because this pocket you're going to be placing stuff in and you don't want it to be sticky in there. So scotch tape, painter's tape. Just make sure it's secure so it doesn't fall off. Then we're gonna place this back on the machine and run the final step. Your stitch out is now complete. We're going to remove the hoop from the machine and we are going to start getting this project cut out. Okay, so we are finally done stitching. I'm just going to go in here, trim any excess threads I can see before I remove it from the hoop. It's very secure right now, so it's easier to get them. This is just a tail that got caught. Under there, um, it looks like we're good. So this mighty hoop, it has a little tab right here. You just grab it. Oh goodness! And pull. I tape. I taped the hoop together, so that's why I wasn't coming apart. You can tear away your excess stabilizer just to get that out of the way. Now we're going to cut out the project. Um, I use these huge titanium scissors. I believe they're they're nine and a half inches long. Um, I have to use scissors that are heavy or I will literally start cutting projects like I'm Edward Scissors hands and I'm like they will look like a mess. So we're gonna start cutting this out. You want to stay close to the stitching, but do not hit the stitching. If you hit the stitching, your sanitizer holder is not going to hold up. So just be very careful. If you are not good at cutting, you want to do this at a time when you are calm, not stressed out. And I move the project. Try to keep a steady hand and move the project and not the scissors. Just 
just want to keep I'm pausing just to make sure that you all can see what I'm doing because sometimes I'll be filming and I'm just like talking away and cutting away and the whole project out of out of the camera view. So I'm over here like, oh yeah, can you see this? And no one can see it but me. <laughs> so we're about done. Just remember, take your time. These are these scissors, I got them on Amazon. I've actually this is my I believe my second pair. I really like these, so anything that I can find a link for, I will link it below. The fabric that I used for the applique, it, today is March 9th, so it just started pre-order at the at Purple Dragon Fabric, so you can pre-order that now. If you're watching at a later date and it's no longer available, I'm so sorry, but we're just going to get that finished. Take your time. And there it is. Look at that. It's so cute. And then your little pocket. So here's that little pocket. This area right here, this was the bottom of the hoop before we placed the pocket. So this is where I was telling you, like if you want to use a glitter canvas or something to that extent, you can use that just to give it a little difference. But there that is. I'm going to show you all now how I use the regular cam snaps without the long prong. Oh, sorry about that. I bought this leather punch. This leather punch is from Hobby Lobby and it's on the smallest setting available. So it's really tiny. What I do, let me grab my snap. So, Let me also show you this real quick. So I order these cam snaps directly from cam snap. They are all labeled. This is one of the sets. So I wanted to show you all this because I recently got these in. And so like your black, the black and whites have the colors on them. I got another set, all the numbers. So if you like to reorder things and you're not as organized as you want to be, they already do it for you. So let me go ahead and get the snaps out that we're gonna use for this. These are perfect. out of the way so you will have can you see come on focus okay so you'll have two pointy ones and then these so it's like a male and a female end I get this little snap put it exactly where I want it make a little hole oh see that's what I was talking about make a little hole it doesn't like me they make a little hole with the snap I get this punch and I punch it right there and I punch it so what that does is it's taking all those layers away so that snap has no issue then I will put the sanitizer in That's about where I want it once the sanitizer's in. Or this is about where I want it once the sanitizer's in. Get this little snap. Push it. Now you have a hole right here as well. Or you have like a little guide, basically. I guess it's not really a hole. And then So you have your hole, your hole, and you're ready to go. 
I'm gonna use this press, which this is just um, your pliers on a base that was purchased from Glinda, I believe. So this base was purchased. Um, the information for these bases are in the Facebook group. I will get that bumped up. And then there that is no issues so I have to take out the press because the wood doesn't fit through here and it needs to go right there so this is what I do this is how I do everything so I put it in there at my finger let's see if you can see it Come on. My finger is holding the snap. So my finger is inside there holding the snap. And then my other finger holds this one. Second hand, get it in there. And press. You can... So now, there you go. We're gonna put that sanitizer back in. Then, this is the gold hardware. I got this hardware off of Amazon. You'll fold in the sides. And there it is. So don't forget, if you are not doing this particular design, but there is a design right here, and there is a design right here, you are going to follow this tutorial. You just want to pull out your stitch guide. So just keep that in mind. Um, and we will see you in our next tutorial. Thank you.